All right, so we talked about it a few weeks ago uh, in North Carolina. Um, there was a, uh, as the Republican governor was going out, he lost the election to the incoming Democrat, um, uh, Roy Cooper, I believe is his name. Um, and so as the Republican governor was going out, he signed a piece of legislation that essentially stripped the governor of his ability to appoint his own cabinet without approval from um, the the representatives there, the, the Senate there. Um, so Roy Cooper is the newly elected governor of the state. Uh, he won by only less than uh, 12,000 votes. And it's an interesting point here. The libertarian uh, candidate actually got 102,000 votes in the same election. So uh, libertarians are good for something. Uh, libertarians gave uh, Virginia, I'm sorry, gave North Carolina to um, to Roy Cooper. And of course, we have to see what Roy Cooper does, but that's neither here nor there right now. So, so there was a three-judge panel who blocked uh, the new law and shifted oversight of elections away from the governor toward the legislature. Um, the decision by the, the judges was released an hour before senators were scheduled to question Cooper's pick. And in their questioning, what they wanted to find out was something pretty reasonable. The problem with it is that it was unprecedented for the state and it was seen and viewed as a power grab and a way of almost punitive action against the incoming governor. Uh, but in their questioning, they wanted to see if the picks, the cabinet picks by the governor were qualified. Did they have any uh, were they able to carry out the duty and did they have any conflicts of interest? Right. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty straightforward things that we would hope to get on the federal level, but instead we get Betsy DeVos. But I digress. So um, the same judges actually overturned this decision and uh, this legislation, rather, this legislation that was passed and signed into law by the outgoing Republican governor. Um, so now um, the the governor is able to make his picks without the uh, the oversight of the representatives and senators there in in, in North Carolina. And again, it's it's uh, I want to I want to just point out one or two things. It is not unreasonable to have oversight. But the reason for it and the way that they did it was quite certainly, most certainly a power grab and a punitive action against the incoming governor. Um, and in terms of what they wanted to know, it's really something uh, in terms of their qualifications, the conflicts of interest and uh, ethics. You know, it's re it really is something that we would have hoped that we could get on the federal level um, from the Senate who by design from the very beginning um, are charged with giving consent on and advice for uh, the president's, uh, the executive branch's uh, cabinet picks. <clears throat> so the irony is, is rather amazing, but it does show you the ongoing power struggle that we have on the state levels. Uh, and we can't in our, in our fight to push back against Trump and conservatives on the federal level, we cannot forget that there are major fights to be fought on the state level. Um, and we need that type of organizing. We need that type of movement to happen every single day.